All right, welcome back. Uh, that there was um, the reports with the NLC and some other partners speaking on alleviating suffering of Nigerians. I'm still in the studio right now with uh, Mr. Musa Maman Kontagora. He is a youth leader and also an APC member, particularly in the North Central Zone. Uh, so let's continue the conversation from here. We're talking about poverty alleviation, and um, what we just saw there is talks of you know just uh, alleviating the hardship that some Nigerians face. Just before the program today, I went out for you know a field report, and um, you know I got to meet someone who I didn't intend to interview, and he came and he said he had something to get off his chest. I will, will surely bring that to you tomorrow. And uh, you know he spoke about the pains he's going through with the removal of first subsidy and all of that. Um, so the issue now is there was also a report that some uh, millions of Nigerians had moved from that. Um, uh, above poverty line into the poverty line with the new announcements we got. That being said, how do you think we can best begin to tackle these issues in this new era? Because Dr. Bethard is coming into a situation where there is now no more fuel subsidy, no more buffering for some a great million of people. So how do you think we can manage this new normal that we now have? And also if you can speak on the NLCs um, uh, response to all of this well uh, I think uh, Nigerians need to be patient a little bit by next week by the grace of God the president is going to announce the new minimum wage by next week and uh, the Minister of Humanitarian is coming out with uh, a lot of engagement and also a lot of plans to carry out activities that will reduce the pressure of unemployment, the pressure of poverty, you get. So, it's of two aspects now. The first aspect is Nigerians, we should not rely on the white collar jobs. You get. We should not rely on the government alone. This is what the government cannot do alone. The government cannot provide for everybody you understand me but what the government should do is the government should find a way of empowering youth into skills acquisition it will it will go a long way in helping in the in, in the reduction of of poverty in the reduction of unemployment you understand and the second part is this is not the tax of only the government the minister of humanitarian alone we have lawmakers, we have uh, the governors, you understand? They should also come up with a lot of potential ideas. Well, some, some persons believe that it is the governors, you know, that have actually been to an extent creative with helping Nigerians. Some of them saying you only need uh, four working days. Some of them providing transport like we have in Edo State, buses for, for staff and some other people. And, you know, we've been seeing governors doing that. But on the, on the larger scale, are we really seeing any of that? And the larger scale, the Ministry of, of Transport is coming up with a scheme. Uh, the Ministry of Transport is trying to come up with an idea, especially, let me say, it has start up in Borno State. The governor of Borno have bought in vehicles that the government will take the responsibility of fueling those vehicles. You get? So those schemes applicable to the Ministry of Transport, you understand? This is not the affairs of only humanitarian alone. This is the affairs of Ministry of Unemployment, Ministry of Employment, Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Transport. You understand me? This is a Do tax. you have as much faith in these other ministries? You seem to already have a uh, belief in Dr. Beta Edu. These other ministries you are mentioning, do you think they are up to the tax of um, the job ahead? Of course, they are up to the tax. We have a, 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 a production, a company that produces car in Nigeria. You understand? The governor should give a guideline. The government should give a guidelines on production of buses that will that will carry out activities in the metropolitan cities of Nigeria to reduce unemployment. I believe if today there, there, there are a lot of buses that will carry people along, it will reduce a lot of unemployment because people are using it as 
they don't have the means of going to work you understand me because of calls cost of fuel so i believe by next week the president will, will bring the new minimum wage and by next week i believe the new plans for the uh, for the mass transport will come up on board i believe with the with the help of the minister minister of fct you understand mm. he's in good place to carry out activities of such with the ministry of transport i believe they will come all together in order to bring out measures to what to reduce the rate of hardship for the citizens all right fair enough uh, let's now move um, quickly into the issue of youth affairs uh what would you say right now is the most pressing need of youth and how do you think that it could um, be achieved by the current administration we have a minister who has been nominated but not um, fully um, appointed at the moment well, what's your take on this issue well i believe uh, the youth of nigeria have been given that sense of belonging and uh, the government have done all it takes belief by bringing up Dr. Jamila Biu, which she's one of us to be the Minister of, of Youth, I believe government should create aside uh, agencies or parastatals under that ministry that we what that we give youth that sense of belonging. You understand me? Yeah. Uh, to me, Nigerian government need to come up with a lot of strategies, a lot of ways. A lot of innovations to engage the youth mm. i believe not all youth if a thousands of youth have graduated in the, into the university studying medicine not all of them will be practicing at them at the medical field you understand me but if the government have engaged the youth into activities that will keep them busy you understand we have a lot of activities that will we, we help the youth to go a long way not to depend on government alone because the government cannot provide for everybody so i believe in this administration the president is trying to come up with a lot of ideas would come to come up with a lot of ways in order to what to engage the youth of nigeria all right that's fair enough um but i'd like to get your thoughts uh, as an apc member what really happened in terms of the announcement of the minister for youth affairs uh prior leading up to that there was a lot of um agitations and lots of campaigns for different candidates did you expect uh the person who emerged to be the one or where was it meant to be others well i said it in an interview i had with a tv station that if the president is trying to compensate the party the minister of youth is coming out from the party definitely the go the president have to look into three or four things the first thing is get a vibrant and resilient youth which we are, I, I believe jamila is resilient jamila is vibrant and again the president should also get bring in somebody that can be able to carry the youth along and i also believe jamila can be able to carry because she's the president of the progressive women forum and also a member of the stakeholders forum for the north central so Jamila have all what it takes to what to handle the Ministry of Youth. But most, most important thing is the Ministry of Youth should be expanded. You understand? A lot of ways to keep the youth engaged. The President should try and bring a lot of agencies into the Ministry of Youth. You understand? So that the youth will be having a lot of activities to carry it on you understand me you understand so a lot of these youth are ignorance of what the ministry is all about you get and with the past administration there is nothing in the ministry of youth you understand how so why because it is a boy it's a, it's a ministry that only contains the ministry steps without other agencies you understand me but the ministry of youth to me is one of the biggest because what every upcoming nigerian is a youth you understand so they rely on that ministry and that ministry should be given a lot of ways in order to partner with foreign agency you understand me to me like the sdg should also be 
should be added at least to the Ministry of Youth. Why? Because the Sustainable Development Goals, it is the youth that are preparing for the, for the future. You understand? So a lot of activities should be given to the ministry in order to, watch, to keep the youth engaged. But what do you think that ministry should really be about? Recall it used to be Ministry of Youths and Sports, uh, I believe, or thereabouts. As, but now it's been separated. We have a Minister of Sports and we now have a Minister for Youths or of Youths. So what do you think really uh, has changed now? And like you said, you said there are not a lot of agencies under youth. So when you talk about programs, what kind of programs can really be done within the framework of this ministry? Well, there are a lot of programs that need to be done. Do you understand? They should be, the government should give this ministry uh, a, a benefit of doubt, should give this ministry opportunity to send a number of youth abroad to study a lot of important courses. You understand? So, uh, you know, we are dealing with the, with the aspect of crime now, a cyber crime. You understand? It is the responsibility of this ministry to, wish, to work hand in hand with the EFCC, with the ICPC, with the DSS, in order to control crimes in Nigeria. You understand? So a lot of you should be, should be, a lot of you should be given opportunity to go out and study. You understand? You understand? To go out and have skills acquisition with a lot of companies, technical companies that what that deals with a lot of innovations and development. Oh, that's fair enough. Um, uh, but speaking about the new minister, do you think our, our antecedents are enough? A lot of people are not very aware. And uh, you, spoke, you spoke about rewarding the party. Is that what's really going on here? Uh, people are saying when they want to read out her antecedents, they say she got a lot of votes or she did the groundwork for votes in this region and so on and so forth. Is that really the criteria that's being looked at here? And when we talk about age, do you think it's appropriate? The age is okay. Mm. As being given the minister of youth, the age is okay. And also, to me, we have a lot of people that has not even participated in, in a lot of activities that have been given ministers. In, in this administration? A lot, a lot of them. Many are just have not even been, been opportune to. She was a former SSA to the governor of, uh, of Kwara State on SDG. You understand? Mm. And I believe you know what all the, all, uh, you believe, I know, you know what SDG is all about. Mm. You understand? This, she's a criti creative youth. She, she's a resilient youth. So, what Nigerians should understand is, the mistakes, to me, first, the mistake Nigerians are making is what? Not having that courage to do it. Not having that belief that we can make a change. You understand? Many Nigerians are after of the AG ones can be able to do it. The youth should be given that space to begin. And I believe as a minister, there are a lot of special advisors to guide her in the ministry. There are permanent secretaries that will put her through into a lot of things. So I believe she can do it. And I believe Nigerians should give her the full support that it takes to do it. It is a calling. She's called to serve and she has to serve. You understand? So Nigerians being said she has not, she don't have that quality to take it. Uh, I believe, look at the time of Yakub Gawan that become the president of Nigeria at the age of 30. You understand? So then what are you, what have you to say to him that he's not only held, she's, he's not holding, holding a ministry, he's, he's holding the nation entirely. You understand me? So, Nigerians should think to have it right. Nigerians should believe in that ideology of I can do it, it can be done. And it will surely be done. You get? So I believe Jamila Bu is going to try her possible best in order to handle the ministry. And what the youth of Nigeria should do is, this is the time for us to come together as one. We need to come together. Let's keep that party differences aside. Nigeria is a country of our own. We have no country that we can call our own than Nigeria. This is where God has destined we should be and we have to be. So we need to come together united, to be united. 
I believe with this step that the president that, that the president is taking to give the youth power from here to some years, I believe will go a long way. What about your good friend and uh, your colleague, uh, Mr. Dayo Israel? Uh, the fact that he, you know, this passed him by to an extent, or even the president's son, Shei Tinubu, these are people that were really picked for the role. Do you think that the, the country, so to speak, or the administration has lost out uh, with this person's not emerging? Well, to me, there will be qualities that the, for the, the president will found in, in selection of the ministers. But we as the APC members, we have nothing against her. And the APC is continue to be one. You understand? Mm. The national youth leader is a, is a very good friend to Jamila Bayo, to Jamila Biu. Mm. Shei Tinibu also is a, is a person that I believe to see he has played his role not only as a youth but as an ambassador of the youth by what by engaging the youth giving the youth the hope that in this government it is for the youth and i believe you have seen a lot of youth has been given appointment you, that is the handwork of what of Tinibu, and also what he has given the youth the sense of belonging but under what capacity uh, don't you think it's, it's my raised question that um, him being the son of the governor grants him so much power of the president, pardon me. Grant him power of what? You said he is responsible for some of the appointments we are seeing uh, of youths and so on and so forth. I'm wondering, you know, under, under what umbrella, under what title is he able to assist in getting youths appointed? He's oh. not under an umbrella. Well, if today you might be an opportune to be a governor, you understand? You being a governor will have a lot, of a lot of activities to carry. You understand? You have a lot of things, burden, burden, a lot of burden, tax mm. to handle. You understand me? So you might have a subordinate that will support you in assistance. Shei Tinibu here is a person that supports the youth into being involved into the government. This is not the party affairs, you understand? We are talking of a national affair now that we are having him as a person that has an open mind for every youth, not only the party. I believe those that are appointed, we know only few of the, of the members of the party have been appointed. Many of them are not members of the party. A lot of them are technocrats. A lot of them are youth that what? That have certain... Uh, qualities in different fields. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we are talking of the national development, national achievement of the Nigerian youth, which a plus should be given to Shei Tinibu for that. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Musa Maman Kutagura. It's been a pleasure hearing you uh, give your thoughts. Uh, I think, um, I don't know if it's because your, your party is in power, but you always come here with a lot of optimism and a lot of hope. So let us hope that this turns out well and other Nigerians who are not APC members and so on and so forth get to feel your hope. Their hope gets to be renewed as, By the, as the president wants. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. All right. Um, that's what we'll take on this segment of the program. We'll bring you now some more reports. Uh, the politics continues. Stay with us. We'll be back soon enough.